the new request has a considerable migration and differentiation potential. Let's illustrate uh, this phenomenon. We'll use a cross-section through the human embryo and on the left part we'll include a scheme of the situation before the migration and on the right part it will be the after migration. So I will include some structures for better orientation. This will be the neurotube, the notochord, the dorsal aorta, the intestine, and uh, there will be the mesenteries, the, vent the dorsal and ventral mesenteries, the coelom cavity, and here I will also need the dorsal roots of spinal nerves, the sensory gang dorsal ganglia, the spinal ganglia, and here the ventral root, the spinal nerve, and the sympathetic a ganglion of the sympathetic trunk. So before migration we got this spinal crest, the cells of which are undergoing a, a process of epithelial mesenchymal transition so first the epithelial cells with lots of uh, cell to cell junctions with c uh, with adhesion to the basal lamina and no I intercellular space are being transformed to more and more connective tissue like cells and they become spindle shaped oval shaped and they will get they will become, th uh, they will increase their, their migration potential. This is called epithelial mesenchymal transi transition, often abbreviated as the EMT. Some cells will remain closely close to the original position and they will form the spinal ganglia and also the um, ganglia of the sympathetic trunk. Some cells will migrate to the dermis and epidermis and they will become the pigment cells of human skin the melanocytes. Some cells will migrate towards the dorsal wall of the coelom cavity and they will become the largest modified sympathetic ganglion that we also known as, as the adrenal medulla. Other migration pathways lead to the mesenteries where the neuro neurocrest cells will form the enteric nervous system, the plexuses of the of the intestine. So let's describe some of these uh, outcomes of the migration. That's the spinal ganglion, all the spinal ganglia actually, and uh, the dorsal root. of the spinal cord, so those are the roots of the spinal nerves. Here we are 
the, with the sympathetic ganglion. of the sympathetic trunk here is the adrenal medulla not the adrenal cortex yeah the adrenal cortex i will use a green color for that is actually derived from the mesoderma of the coelom, so only the adrenal medulla. And I'll label the enteric nervous system and I will label also the pigment cells, the melanocytes, sitting on the junction between the dermis and epidermis. I will label other structures. It's the spinal cord here, the notochord, the dorsal aorta, uh, this is the intestine, This is a ventral mesentery. Dorsal mesentery. This is the coelom cavity. But it's these are not all the structures that are derived from from the from the uh, neural crest, right? More structure should be added, like like the, the actually the whole peripheral nervous system including the autonomic nervous system which includes both the sympathetic and parasympathetic components the head mesenchyma an extremely important cell population for development of face for example teeth yeah. like the odontoblasts There are cells, cells that are producing dentin. The mesenchyma of a pharyngeal arches that are forming, contributing to the uh, to the upper and lower jaw, to the to the orofacial region and to the neck. Also, the placodes. of some cranial nerves namely the 5th, 7th, the ninth, and the 10th cranial nerve and also for example the aortico pulmonary septum that contributes to division of the outflow part of heart ventricles and helps to separate the aorta from pulmonary trunk. Actually, why do we care? We care because uh, any interference with the migration pathways uh, of the neurocrest cells might cause some developmental defects or even syndromes with with more defects. So remember the neurocrest has an amazing migration and differentiation potential.